Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Sky Factory 3. Uh, we are in the Beneath right now, where I finished up last episode. And uh, as you can tell, there's quite a bit more things missing now than there were than there were before. Uh, and also, you can see, <clears throat> that's because A, I mined out all of this area here with Vein Miner. That was to get one level on my pickaxe. Everything that was here before to that wall, that was all one level on my pickaxe. Uh, I left a few things here and there, uh, went back and mined those out. There's uh, Draconium here. That's what these little shiny purple blocks are, these little purple shiny ores. I left those so that you guys could see how frequently they appear in here. And um, in this giant area, there are, let's see, two, three, four, uh, four. Yeah. Maybe five, if I miscounted and didn't see one of them, like hidden under something. But no, it looks like there's just four right there. Uh, anyway, uh, also, the reason you can see is because I went ahead and crafted up a ring of night vision. There's the recipe for that. It uses our golden carrots we were using for food. Uh, water bottle, the generic ring, diamantine crystal block, and another wart. So, potion ring for night vision. I had night vision built into my dark steel helmet before, but since we switched armors, then I had to go ahead and uh, craft the ring for it. And upgraded that to advanced so it works in my inventory. That gives us a permanent 15 second night vision. So you can see all in here basically. Uh, so we can see the Gru. There was one there just a minute ago. There's also one right there hanging out. So there's multiple of them. They kind of just kind of uh, hang around down here. Uh, also, you can see the original uh, the original entrance. Oh, is that him down there? Hiding underneath that block. Uh, you can see the original block uh, exit thing that I made, and that's where I put the little marker here, and then since I moved it uh, in the overworld, it created a secondary exit right there, so that's the second one. So that's the one that I enter in now. I come in through that one, and then this is the one I have marked, so I usually leave through this one. Uh, anyway, so while we're in here, uh, it also cleared my experience bar. It's just kind of a visual thing, but I have 60 levels from doing all of this here. I picked up 60 levels. And also, something that I failed to mention last episode is that my armor can be recharged in this power cell. You can uh, actually put one at a time in here and recharge them if they take damage. So I actually really don't have to leave for anything except food. And the food... Uh, I made a Darkinator. Here's the recipe. It's uh, four iron, two planks, redstone, and two black wool. That makes this Darkinator. And it auto-eats for you as long as you load it full of food first. And so it'll take uh, a cup of coffee, coffee beans, coffee con leche, meat, feast, pizza, regular pizza, supreme pizza, and toast. So I was like, hey, toast, all right. So uh, that's easily renewable, easy to craft, easy to make. So I set up a little tiny wheat farm in the overworld and spammed out some toast and uh, filled this thing up with toast. And that's uh, the result right here. That was uh, probably like eight hunger bars, full bars worth of food dug out of there. And then I went and refilled it. So uh, Also, I did a lot of exploration around out here, so my map is a bit filled in. Uh, well, it's only going to show the layer that I'm in, like a slice, but way over there, I found a spider spawner, little dungeon room. So there's actually dungeon spawn rooms and mob spawners in this map, in the beneath. So, yeah. Also, there's these little, like, uh, grassy, foresty biome things here. There's several of those around, but I haven't really messed with them. I don't really have a use for anything there. Uh, otherwise, uh, normal mobs, and they spawn way off out in the distance because I have these mega torches here. 
Anyway, so that's just kind of a catch-up from last episode. Let's head back out to the overworld and get started on today's project. I'm going to pop back out through here. It's probably going to stick me underneath the platform. As soon as it loads, there we go. Yeah, good thing I can fly. Uh, originally, I had the block here. That's why it dumps me out here. But yeah, make sure, if you cannot fly, to put the beneath teleporter above uh, solid ground, for sure. Don't put it like in the floor, because it'll glitch you down underneath it. Anyway, so here's the little wheat farm that I made. Uh, I moved a few of these uh, growth crystals from up there at our regular farm down to here, so these will grow really fast. Uh, made another farming station, brought down some conduits, set up a power cell, uh, made a tier 1 crafter and a... Uh, did I bring that one down here? No, I crafted a new one. Uh, made a new extra utilities furnace because it's the only furnace I think in the pack that runs on RF power that doesn't require fuel to be put into it. So I put that in there. Uh, I could use a vanilla furnace with a solar panel with the uh, furnace augment in it, but this was just easier. And I didn't really want it to, you know, take up a lot of space or use a lot of materials. Just a little quick and easy thrown together setup here. So the um, wheat farm has an obsidian hoe in it. I picked up one from up there. I've got like 10 of them. Uh, the wheat goes into this crafter. Everything here is powered by that power cell. It's on the same uh, system as everything else. So the wheat goes into the crafter. The crafter makes bread. Goes to external slot here, which goes out through this conduit into the furnace. Furnace cooks the bread into toast, and then I pick up the toast and put it in the darkenator, which is now at 63 out of 64, and will automatically eat toast whenever I need it in my uh, hunger bar. So that's that. Uh, I also expanded out the platform a bit here. This is where our new project is going to be built. I think this is enough space. I probably don't need more than that, but we'll find out because I've never done this before. The thing we're going to be doing, if you have read the title of the episode, is we're going to be doing some fusion crafting today. At least attempting it. Attempting fusion crafting? I don't know how it works. It's a new thing from uh, Draconic Evolution since 1.7. It's the like 1.10 updated version of the uh, Dragon Heart explosion, what you call it thing. Or is it? No, you still have to do that, right? To make Awakened Draconium, you still have to do that? Uh, Where's my information tablet thing right here. Let's grab that real quick. Give this a quick look. I don't know how this is going to show up on the recording. It like lags out. Alright, there we go. Uh, Awakened Draconium. Oh, you put the Dragon Heart into the fusion crafting thing. Oh, alright. Well, that's a lot easier, I guess. 350 million RF. And those are regular draconium blocks? What do you use the charged blocks for, then? Oops. Um. Huh. They don't, they're not listed. Weird, okay. Are they here? Yeah, they're here. Charged Draconium Block. What do you use it for? Nothing. No use, no recipe. Weird, okay. I guess they just uh, ported it over and didn't remove it yet. Doesn't seem to have a use or anything. Ah, alright. Anyway, so according to the information... To do the fusion crafting, we first need a fusion crafting core, which is um, draconic core, four diamonds, and four lapis blocks. So easy to make. I've already made it. It's in my inventory here. 
Um, once you have that, you need... I'm going to go with eight of these um, fusion injectors. Basic fusion crafting injector. So here's what the fusion crafting recipe thing looks like in the... Um, was it the NEI or whatever? Uh, so basically, this square in the middle shows what's inside the core, that thing that's in my inventory. And the things in the purple on the edges here are what you put into these injectors around that block in the middle, around the crafting core in the middle. And it uh, pulls them out and uh, changes the item there into the one at the bottom, the top one into the bottom one. So it technically works almost exactly the same way as the Empowerer does. So this would be the uh, Fusion Crafting Core. These would be the injectors. As long as they're facing the core and they're within like 60 some odd blocks in any direction on a straight line, uh, plus or minus one in any axis, then uh, they work. So. There's like a big giant uh, glass cross diagram thing in the information that it showed. So seems to be pretty much the same setup as that, and it uses a ton of power. So we might have to upgrade another power cell or make the higher tier power cell. But uh, so this is how you craft with the basic stuff. See, it says tier basic there. Whenever you get the basic one, you can upgrade it using the same setup into a Wavern Fusion Crafting Core. And then that allows you to do the things here that say Tier Wavern. So you can uh, like upgrade items or craft whatever. It looks like you use it to charge your... You can use it to charge your armor and weapons and tools. Let's see, 4 million, 4 million. I don't get what it's doing there. Hold control for upgrades. Capacity, basic, dig speed, AOE speed. Oh, okay, that's adding this upgrade key to it. Okay. So there's basic, wavern, uh, draconic... And then chaotic, which is not implemented yet, as far as I know. But anyway, let's get this thing set up. So we need eight of these cores. Here's the recipe. Uh, two diamonds, draconic core, block of iron, and any kind of stone. Uh, we need eight of those to do the complete setup originally. And then we need another eight to upgrade those to the wavern level. So I'm going to make 16 of these. That might be overkill. But I think... Wait, can you use the Wavern cores to craft basic items? Because then I could, like, hot swap them out once I have... I'd have to make nine. And then hot swap one at a time after I uh, update them. Hmm, let's try it. I'm going to just do nine to start with. I already have the recipe uh, plugged into our crafting system here. So can I make nine of these? Yes, I've got all the material. So here's the total. Uh, 27 diamonds, 36 gold, 45 stone, nine blocks of iron, and 36 draconium ingots. Total, that's all the materials. All right, start. And they're done. Okay, easy enough. So we're going to go set this up down here. Yeah, give me that. And that's going to go, let's just put it, let's center it on like that thing. That's centered enough, I guess. Now, these have to be facing that, like they have to be attached to a block on the outside edge. How do I want to do this? Uh, let's get something to place on real quick. Let me grab some more wood blocks or something. Uh, 
like some planks will be fine. Drop back down here. Okay, so that, uh, let's back it up one space. So two spaces between the core and where the uh, block, the injector will be against this block right here. So one, two, there, one, two, there, one, two, and there. All right, so that's going to be our setup. That's pretty much exactly enough space. So one, two, three, four, and then they can be plus one and a plus or minus one in any axis from the crafting core. So I can actually just do this, go uh, plus one on the y axis, and do four more, and that should work. Now these, as far as I know, act like um, item uh, pedestals or those little display stands. Yeah, you right click an item into them and it hangs on to it. So these eight slots here represent the eight slots on the sides of the crafting deal here. Pretty sure I've explained that well enough. <laughs> if I'm not doing a good job explaining it, let me know. But that's the basic idea. Now I don't know if the core in the middle takes the power or if the injectors on the outside take the power. But just in case I have to run cable to these, I'm going to get rid of the blocks around them. I'm kind of hoping the core in the middle takes the power. But uh, it might be like the way the empowerer works, I'm not sure. Anyway, we are going to make a advanced power cell. Here we go. All right, I'm going to need to just make this super easy. Oh, I need dimensional shards. I forgot about the dimensional shards. OK, so we can't do that. Well, I guess just a uh, regular power cell it is then. All right, where do I have space in the system to put these? Nowhere. Awesome. Then let's make another crafter. I'm always adding stuff to the system. I think the fusion crafting is going to use more power in like one operation than everything else I've crafted total or all the power I've used total so far. Well, maybe not. That's like 967 million right there. And yeah, we should be fine. <laughs> it might entirely drain the system of power, but I should be okay. All right, we're going to put this crafter right there. And we're going to put those in. And we're going to say, craft me one of these. And then we're going to say, craft me, I shouldn't have the items for that. I should just regular craft it. Don't need the recipe for it. That was my last piece of paper. Um, out of sugar cane. All right, well, I have a small sugar cane farm over here set up. So I will uh, have to harvest up a little bit more of that later. Anyway, let's get this card linked. ID number two. We're going to take the power cell down here. I'm going to hope. Uh, let's place this right there. Out. Link it. I'm going to hope that the power goes into this and not all of these. That'll just save me on cable, but I should be fine. Or a conduit, I mean. 
you know what I mean. All right, so if we put that there, show recipes. If I want to upgrade this one, I need uh, four diamonds, a wavering core, two draconic cores, and a block of draconium. So let's go grab all that stuff and test this out. Also, I'm not sure if it uses like a redstone signal to activate or if it just starts going as soon as you have all the stuff in it. Okay, so one wavern, two draconic. Just double checking. Make that. And two of these. And then four diamonds. And a block of draconium. All right. Let's go see if this works. I don't think it matters where they are on the setup, but I know these will take a whole stack of items at a time, so I have to separate these out like that. Actually, I'm not sure if they're supposed to be facing like this or not, but it showed it that way in the illustration because the items are showing up sideways, so I don't know if you can have these standing up or not. Oh well, this is fine. I don't care. Uh, draconium block there. Let's just kind of pair these off like that. Is this giving out any power? No. Ah, there we go. So, start. How much power is this supposed to use, I wonder? This is going to use 256,000 RF, and this core is holding 7 million? Yeah, we're fine. Start. Well, it does have audio. You can hear these little clicks whenever the there's like lightning sparking. Let's turn the particles on. Maximum particles. Uh, okay, I guess that's all the particles. Never mind. Turn those back off. All it does is turn on the rain audio. Zero percent. What am I missing here? It's not using any power? So do these actually take power? Let's go... I guess I'll have to wire it up kind of like our uh, empowerer station is there. Let's grab some conduit. Luckily I have, let's see, 83 of the ender conduit here. Just grab a stack, should be fine. And let's wire this thing up. Insert power there, insert power there. I'm going to disable this one on the bottom just because. And say extract here. Okay, now it has the little bubble thing on it. Does it have a percentage? 25%. Alright, that was the problem. And it has received power. Alright. That was the problem. Oh, I didn't need to take that one out. Alright. Well, we're doing it live. It's like a Frankenstein monster coming to life here. Got the rain and everything. We need more power! Whoops. Too much power. Oh, that should be 
Oh, I took the items out. No! I was just trying to click the conduit onto the back of the thing here. That probably canceled the entire operation. Seems like it did. Let's go down here. Disable this one. I could use the Yetta wrench for this, but I'm actually not used to carrying it around or actually using it. I just kind of have it on my hotbar and never use it. So these conduits are actually very nice so that you don't have to uh, use the wrench. It's not a requirement, it just kind of helps. Okay, that should be everything wired up. And start. 60. All right, now maybe there are more particles. Let's turn them all on. Oh, that's cool. It's like a, uh, what was it, Hydro City? No, Metropolis. Metropolis zone uh, Robotnik fight going on here. If you guys know what I'm talking about, leave a comment. <laughs> and done. Alright. And we got one Wavern Fusion Crafting Injector. Ta-da! Sweet. Now, here's a question. If I pull one of these off, replace it with this one, like that, and then go get all the same stuff. Oh, nope, just one. Make sure I'm not running out of nether stars here. One wavern, two draconic, uh, block, you know, the rain actually sounds kind of cool from underneath here. It has a different sound when you're underneath a wooden platform, I guess. Um, and then we need four diamonds. All right. Let's see if it accepts the same items the same way, and I can use this in place of a basic one. So, diamond, diamond. I'm going to put these in the exact same places they were, so we know nothing has changed. The block I had there, I'm pretty sure. these two like that, Wavern Core there. Will it accept this? Seems like it. Yeah. So it charges and then crafts. So it's got two different uh, two different operations. Yeah, it takes it. So I actually only needed nine. I didn't have to make all 16. You can mix and match these. I guess as long as they are minimum what they require or higher, you can do it. Awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and swap out this one right here. Cool. Well, uh, I don't know how many more nether stars I have, but I might have to go and uh, kill a few more withers to upgrade the rest of these. But that's the basis of it, and I'm glad it works that easy, actually. I was kind of expecting it to be more complicated. Uh, it almost looks more complicated than that on the documentation, but, you know, in practice it's fairly easy. Anyway, uh, we are pretty much exactly at 30 minutes here. 
So yeah, thanks for coming by and watching. If you guys have any questions about this stuff, uh, leave some comments. Oh, real quick. I got a comment about these crumb stars. Uh, for those of you that had the same question as me about what the heck to use these for, I got a comment that said you can eat these. And they're like superfood. They refill your health and saturation entirely. Health and hunger all the way back to full. I would not have even tried that because it has no information anywhere about this. It doesn't have a crafting recipe or a use. Well, you can turn it into biomash, so eh, culinary generator takes it. I guess I would have eventually guessed that it was food of some kind because you can turn it into food and it goes into culinary generator. But otherwise, I probably would have just left them in there to rot for the for the remainder of the series. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's gonna do it. So yeah, until next time, thanks for coming by and watching. And until next episode, I'll see you guys then. Have a good day.